I reject most of what you would call the magic uh, in uh, theurgia. I'm not trying to bring back theurgia proper or anything like that. I'm not interested in uh, worshiping idols or, or anything like that. But I do want to pick up on um, the use of the imaginal within ritual to enhance our ability to detect uh, otherwise undetected subtle patterns, psycho uh, somatic, uh, psychosocial, psychoontological patterns. Uh, I feel that very present, for example, when I, in Tai Chi Chuan practice doing Tai Chi. Um, and I think um, I think Strzok's book on divination and human nature, the ancients, uh, they, they treat divination very differently. And it, it, the name is, of course, kind of important too. They treat it differently. Um, they don't write treatises about magic or sorcery, but they care about this ability. And Strzok makes, I think, the very good point that the term we would use for what they're talking about is intuition. And they're trying to really understand this ability we have for insight, intuition. Um, I think it, uh, one way of thinking of it is the a way of imaginally exercising uh, the capacity for noose, that capacity. Um, and... Um, so I'm interested, I, I'll, the, I'll, I'll make a hybrid word for this poll, the ritual liturgical poll. Um, and, and then I'm interested in this third that properly depends on them, which uh, I've been calling dialectic into dialogos, where dialectic is a practice and dialogos is a process that you can only participate in. You can't do dialogos. If you're trying to do dialogos, you're, you've missed it. It's like doing love. You have to participate in it, uh, but it's not something you can make happen. You can't be a, the, the causal agent. Uh, dialectic helps you cultivate a receptivity uh, to getting into dialogos. And I think that dialogos is not being reducible to dialogue precisely because it has the, it seriously and deeply has these ritual liturgical aspects to it and these uh, contemplative, meditative aspects to it, and it's seriously trying to work with something like the collective intelligence of distributed cognition. And so, for me, um, I hold that, and I, I do the I do the triangle deliberately. That for me, and this is Plotinus. He holds dialectic as being, you know, the the greatest practice. And Socrates, you know, repeatedly says to to engage in dialectic, right, or dialog into dialogos is the best way that a human being can live. And I, no, I know, I know you don't agree with that, but I, I, I'm just saying why I justify putting it at the top of the pyramid. And so, my question that I want to raise to you, and I don't know, I'm ignorant about orthodoxy, so I'm just going to state the ig ignorance. Um, I've, I don't see these practices. I don't see them like so. People are something like in a Platonic dialogue. Um, and they're getting into dialogos. And as Socrates says, he's following the logos like you follow the wind. And uh, there's some resonance there with Jesus about comparing the right, um, uh, the, 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 where does the spirit flow from and blow from, right? The, like the wind. Um, and I don't see those practices, those dialogical practices um, in the Protestantism that I'm familiar with or that I've examined. Um, I'm not clear I don't see them in Roman Catholic churches. Perhaps they exist in Roman Catholic monasteries, so I'm open to hearing that. But my question is, for me, <coughs> this is the core thing, because uh, this is where uh, we can encounter something like, and I, I'm saying this with respect, and I hope you take it that way, something like, analogous, so not exactly like your encounter with the elder or exactly the Vedantist encounter with the guru or the Taoist encounter with the Sifu, but at least in that family where the group actually acts like Socrates uh, to the individual and provides um, in the process and the practice something that can overcome egocentrism and um, significantly challenge uh, a kind of intellectual pride um, I'm not saying it's a panacea, and I'm not saying it's an algorithm for resisting those, but um, I think these practices like philosophical contemplation, philosophical fellowship around a philosophical text, Lexio Divina, 
and dialectic into dialogos. I don't see, I know Lexio is in the Catholic tradition, in the yeah, monastic. It's just anything in the Orthodox Church. Today. Right, right. So I'm asking, is there anything like that in Orthodoxy? And, and first of all, I want to make sure that that's a, a fair question to ask. So it's a very fair question. It's an, it's an excellent question. Um, let, let me answer your first question first about yeah. ritual and the imaginal. Yes. Um, so you've been talking a lot about the imaginal, which I guess you get from Corbin. Corbin and some other things. Yeah, yeah. Hillman and others. Yes. And, uh, uh, and Raf. Yes. Those are okay. the three biggest influences on me about the imaginal. All right. And, um, you know, I, th I think I understand what you're referring to when, when you talk about it. Uh, of course, the imaginal is not part of common parlance. Uh, you know, people talk about the the imagination, yes, um, yes. and or fantasy, um, you know. But the but what you're referring to is something quite quite different. Yes, very much. Uh, and um, and obviously, uh, I think once I understood what you were referring to, it seemed to be obviously true within at least within its own parameters. Um, you know, you give the example of the the Tai Chi, um, and you know, obviously it works. Yes. So, oh, all right. Now, if we apply that to ritual, um, so first of all, let's let's try to define ritual at least in Orthodox terms. Um, uh, for the Orthodox, a ritual is a kind of symbol. Yes. Um, but specifically it is an enacted symbol is or you could say a performed symbol yes uh and that's that's actually indicated in the greek word for ritual which is teleti um or the the neoplatonists sometimes use the word uh telestiki um but it comes from the word uh telo which means to finish to to complete or you know ah. just something or to perform right to, um, you know, and there's words in Greek that are related to it, like ektelo, you know, to um, uh, to uh, execute um, a, a task. Uh, so, so the the idea in Greek of of ritual is even by the word itself, which is obscured in, in English, um, connected to the idea of a physical practice. Yeah, it has to yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, now, I know you talk a, a lot about how we need, in our ecology of practices, we need a physical practice as, yes. um, you know, as included in that. And of course, in in Christianity, the the way that we have this, or at least part of the way that we have this, is through ritual. And um, so, if we think of it as enacted symbolism, we of, of course a symbol is understood in the Orthodox Church as, um, if you'll allow me uh, the explanation, um, you know, we 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 view we have we view concrete individual particulars within the world we abstract them in order to come up with a general idea um and we can do that within a religious context so we can think of obviously the good the beautiful the true these are abstractions from specific examples of yes. you know some beautiful thing or some true statement or whatever um but the problem is that human beings, uh, we think more easily in concrete terms than we do in abstract terms. Uh, to think abstractly requires a certain mental effort. Um, and it's, uh, it's well, it's difficult for, for a lot of people and it's difficult for everybody over, you know, a sustained period of time. So, so what a symbol does is it, re-represents to us an abstraction in a concrete way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but in a way which contains within itself the totality 
of the abstraction and thus all of its, its particular examples. Uh, so, you know, we have, uh, we have all sorts of uh, rituals in, in the Orthodox Church. Uh, liturgically, this would be the primary, primary mm. mode. And uh, of course, we have um, ritual statements, ritual gestures. Uh, we have, you know, movements, processions. Uh, we have the chanting, um, all of which, you know, goes according to a certain order. We have the 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 structure of the music itself, which is, um, of course, which is according to a certain set of rules. We, you know, we don't just use any music uh, in in church. Um, the music itself is symbolic. And, you know, as St. Athanasius the Great says, uh, that music brings the soul into harmony with itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he didn't come up with that idea. <laughs> that was previously stated <laughs> Pythagoras. By, <laughs> right. by Pythagoras. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and, and what, what symbolism in the, especially in the context of the church, allows us to do is it makes these abstract ideas immediately accessible to us in, in a way that everybody can, can experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately what that does is, you know, connecting again to, to your work. Um, although obviously it was thought of before, you know, a few thousand, couple thousand years before you were around. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> um, it, you know, is is that in it allows us to experience the what could what could be understood as a proposition. It allows us to under to experience it uh, in a perspectival way. Mm. Uh, well, first in a procedural way. I mean, chanting yeah. is a procedure, for example. Um, then in a perspectival way, because you know we. We, if we enter an Orthodox church, we see all the icons there. It immediately puts us in 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 the mood to think about, you know, all of these, you know, think about God, the life of Jesus, the the saints, and then in a, in a participatory way, yes. um, you know, we we are very much participating in the liturgy. Uh, obviously, if you're um, uh, if you're if you're listening to to the chanting, for example, you're uh, with attention. You are uh, participating in it, and if you're actually doing the chanting, then then you are um, participating in an even more obvious manner. So, so basically, the the symbolism allows us to um, to experience on a practical level, on the on all all of the levels of knowledge that you that you talk about, uh, which I think are great categories, by the way, in which um, I frequently refer to. Um, so thank you for, for your thank work you for there. Yeah. Um, you know, it allows us to, to experience those things, which otherwise would be difficult to, to access. So it's basically, and, and you know, all, all of the symbols of the church converge. We're talking about, when we talk about abstractions, you know, we're talking about the things which um are ultimately the structure of reality and so when we have when we have symbols which are representing elements of the structure of reality um and of course we have many different symbols they all mutually reinforce one another so that we can participate in the entire structure of reality by means of these symbols all right. So could I just reply to that point before you move to the sure, second? Sure, sure. I, 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 do, you, do you agree with that, by the way? I do. I do. I, 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 but I, I want to extend it and see if you agree with the extent. First of all, that joining of the intelligible uh, to the sensual, if I can put it that way, because I want to use Corbin's terms, that's that is the defining feature of the imaginal. That's it's the symbol mm -hmm. on it. It actually is what. Um, brings the two together you were calling it the abstract and the concrete but that maps on exactly to what he's he's talking about um, and by, by the way the fathers do use that 
that terminology you just said the the intelligible and the, the, sense, the, the sensible yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Ton no yeah. ton que to esti ton and and and, of, and yes i think the imaginal is like you said it's a way of engaging the non propositional properly and then i pick up on the work of uh, jennings and shobrek and others that what makes imaginal ritual is that it transfers that non-propositional knowing to non-ritualized contexts and informs um, those non-ritualized contexts such that people can more conform to a good life. Um, yes. So, yes. You know, right. And so, and that that's a, so. I, I want to extend that horizontal dimension that I talk about. I think that's properly, and you're saying yes. So I think you agree with that. And then the other is, it. it, it uh, I want to. I want to talk about how it not only reaches up, it reaches down, uh, because the the point is everybody and you did say this but every all of the propositional is always deeply reliant on and embedded in the non-propositional you and i are both gesturing when we're trying to talk we're nodding we're playing with intonation we're flipping around perspectives with metaphor we're doing all of this and it's to say that right it's not only so much that the symbol reaches up and I, I'm, I'm gonna and i hope you'll take this in the right way but it reaches down it reaches into the depths of our embodiment and our 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 our, our like of of our cognition so it's deep calling to deep if i can put it yes. that way um no that's so a that, beautiful scriptural reference by the way yes that's one of my favorite passages from the psalms um and so i uh that's i i just i'm just i think and you seem to be nodding and saying yes so I, i'm just trying to amplify it uh what you said i, I agree it's, entirely yeah. okay yes. good um because that's right. th that's what i'm trying to get out right that's what i'm trying to get out in that 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 one part of that one pole i'm trying to get that out and bring that into um a neoplatonic way of life now i'll let you go to the next question oh, wait no 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 I, there's yeah one more thing i want to say about the first about the ritual okay and and this is where we're going to differ a little bit i think yes um but it's a really important point please uh, which is that for us in for christians in the ritual and in all of the symbolism which we use uh you're using the word imaginal for to express our participation and our and our yeah. the, the way that we conceive and interact with with the um with these symbols the word that we would use in christianity is faith yes um because we are not conceiving these as uh some sort of provisional mm. mental concepts that perhaps in theory could change um rather we are conceiving them as eternal truths uh fundamental truths about reality which we accept on faith um and obviously by faith I, i'm not referring to a blind faith and something no, no, I, I yeah, yeah. um which we accept on faith and by faith uh we both accept it in in some absolute sense in other words that there's some absolute core to to what we're believing or there's to put it differently there's some absolute basis a grounding to reality uh which has to be there otherwise you're just chasing your tail mm -hmm. continually um and which um uh, really goes to what saint paul says about faith he says um um faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen uh in the king james translation in in hebrews so regardless of who wrote Hebrews, that's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's... Um, the, um, so, so when we say that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, um, what we're doing, and, you know, some of the fathers of the church uh, talk about this explicitly, and uh, actually Clement of Alexandria talks about it uh, very explicitly. Um, St. Maximus does as well. The, uh, with, with faith, with Christian faith, it's not, we understand it in the Orthodox Church, not as 
mental assent to a series of propositions. Of course not. Yeah. By by which, if we assent, we therefore gain salvation. As you know, maybe the most extreme Protestant view would be. Right. Um, and and I, I realize that many Protestants would would not want to go that far with it, that simplification. Sure. But but anyways, there's enough truth in it to make it a useful yeah. reference point sure. uh, to contrast with. Uh, you know, in in the Orthodox Church, we're we're viewing in in these uh, terms. It's almost a definition that that Saint Paul is offering here. Um, that that faith is making present, actually present to us, um, both those things which we we believe to be in the in, in the future. You know eternal life and so forth um but but also the the whole life of the church the whole uh, structure of the interaction of god with reality with with us with the human soul and the way that we correspondingly interact with with reality and with god that all of this is being made present, actually present, in such a way so that it, I'll say, I'll use this phrase, um, but I don't want it to be misinterpreted, so that it becomes real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, but the thing is that the, like you say, the key difference here uh, is that we are believing it as something real and something true and something absolute not not something provisional or mm -hmm. um you know something which in the back of, the, of our mind we know is well it's not actually that way um i'm just you know using it as a useful convention so uh, so i i think from from an orthodox point of view at least this is where this is one of the ways it's not the and the only way where where faith comes in in a in a very practical way, and so where you are you describing um, all sorts of ritual, and you're 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 describing all mm -hmm. sorts of um, ways of having perspectival knowing, which are genuinely useful for us to grow and to find meaning in our lives, which I totally agree with. Um, where you are using the word imaginal in many of those places not not all of them because i i recognize the place of the imaginal on its own terms mm -hmm. um but in many of those places we would use the word faith and we would think of it in something in terms that are somewhat more amplified than than what you mean by the imaginal does that make sense it does and uh, i want to i want to 